Hello, this video is going to be a bit of a deeper dive into the pension side of superannuation, so at or around retirement. Uh, if you're interested to stick around, it's probably going to be a longer video. So the first thing that we need to understand when it comes to the pension side of the superannuation system is something called the transfer balance cap. The transfer balance cap measures, and it's the ATO essentially measures it, but it measures how much money you've transferred into the tax-free pension side of superannuation. That limit is currently $1.9 million, and that was indexed up back on the 1st of July. So that means if you have more than $1.9 million in accumulated superannuation benefits, you can only transfer, as I said, $1.9 million into a tax-free pension fund. Now that transfer balance cap is, me is only measured at the time that you commence that pension. So it doesn't matter if your pension balance grows, if you have really good investment earnings on that balance and it can grow to two, three, four million dollars and beyond, it can still stay in that tax-free pension fund. So it's only measured on the day that it starts uh, and it's also only measured when you satisfy a full retirement condition of release for superannuation. So the two most common ones and, and the one that I'll do a client example a little bit later on in this video is where someone turns 65. So once you turn 65, if you decide to start a pension from your superannuation after 65, the amount of money that you transfer into that pension side will be credited towards this transfer balance cap. The other really common one uh, where people are, are accessing a, a retirement stage pension is when they're over the age of 60 and they've ceased a gainful employment arrangement. Now that ceasing gainful employment arrangement, it doesn't mean that you have to stop work altogether. Now, I use the example often with clients that you could be working 100 hours a week for Coles, you quit on Friday and you start for working 100 hours a week for Woolworths on Monday, if you're over the age of 60, you then trigger full access to your superannuation benefits and in particular access to be able to start one of these tax-free pensions in retirement. If you're starting what's called a transition to retirement pension, so the only requirement that you need for that is that you turn 60, a transition to retirement pension doesn't count towards your transfer balance cap. So you can actually technically start a transition to retirement pension with $10 million if you had $10 million in superannuation and you wanted to access that. Remember, the, uh, the transition to retirement pension has a maximum cap at 10% that you can take out. I'm gonna spin the camera around and explain some of these concepts in a diagram form. So an existing client of mine that I was meeting with the other day, they have a self-managed superannuation fund and the balance of their self-managed super fund is north of $6 million. They have a big commercial premises in here, $1.5 million in shares and cash and term deposits. So, so it's, a, it's a big self-managed superannuation fund that they've worked actively on building that balance up for years and years and years. Mr. has just turned 65. They needed to access $300,000 from their SMSF to help do some things that they needed some money for. So what we've done here is this, this balance is split roughly three million and three million. So it's, it's almost split evenly down the middle. What the husband's been able to do, he's now 65, even though he is still working and contributing to the superannuation fund, is elect to start a pension. So with part of his benefits, we've commenced an account-based pension with $1.9 million. From there, there's a minimum amount of money that he has to take out each year to satisfy the pension requirements. That minimum, because he's over the age of 65, or he is 65, is 5%. So there's roughly about $100,000 has to come out of this pension fund in pension payments. That money's tax-free to him because he's over the age of 60, but about $100,000 has to come out. Now, as I said earlier on in the video, the only time that this $1.9 million is measured against the transfer balance cap is on the commencement of the pension. It doesn't matter if this balance continues to grow to two to two and a half million dollars and beyond, nor does it also matter if the investments don't do so well and it goes down. So the ATO doesn't care. They say, well, we're not, we're not gonna count the balance as it goes up. We're not going to give you any concessions if the balance goes down. So if the $1.9 million balance, the investments perform really poorly and they go down to $1 million, the ATO nicely says, bad luck. Now I said they want to take $300,000 out of the SMSF. So the first $100,000 of that will be treated as a pension payment that comes from this account-based pension that started. The remaining $200,000 will actually come out of the accumulation site. So we've started a pension with $1.9 million. That's gonna leave roughly $1.1 million still in the accumulation side for the husband uh, the wife's not yet old enough to start one of these retirement pensions, so all of her money is an accumulation. So when you're taking money out of an SMSF, 
uh, you can elect to allocate it to different accounts within that SMSF. The husband's being over the age of 65, he has full access to all of his parts. So we need to take some money out as what we're going to call a pension payment to satisfy the minimum pension requirements for here to get the tax-free earnings on this. And then the remaining balance, because the accumulation fund will continue to be taxed at a maximum of 15%, the preference is to take more money from here and less money from here. So if we dive into the tax implications and how this works from the SMSF perspective. So an account-based pension, when you start one of these, the tax rate on the earnings of that account-based pension are zero. So it's entirely tax-free. The tax rate on the earnings of the accumulation side is a maximum of 15%. And the same thing over here on the wife's side, because hers is all in accumulation, it's a maximum of 15% as well. Now, these assets aren't, you can't segregate the assets into these different accounts. What happens is a one uh, summary of the earnings of the whole SMSF are calculated and then the earnings are proportioned amongst the different accounts. So if we said the SMSF is worth about $6 million, there's roughly a third of the fund being $1.9 million is in pension. Then two thirds is in accumulation. So then once the earnings of the superannuation fund are determined, so it's income that's earned, realized capital gains, all of these kind of things, it's then proportioned to say, Roughly a third of those earnings is, in, is attributed to the pension fund, so they're tax-free. Two-thirds is attributed to the accumulation fund, and they're taxed at a maximum of 15%. Now remember, if some of the, some of the earnings of the superannuation fund are realised capital gains on assets that have been held for a maximum of, sorry, for more than a year, those gains are then only taxed at uh, CAP, cap gain. Uh, they're only taxed at a maximum of 10% if the assets are owned for more than a year. Now back to your question that prompted this whole lengthy video was around can you add more money to your account-based pension as the balance goes down. So if you've started this pension with $1.9 million, you, you used up all of your transfer balance cap and all you've taken out of there is money that you've called pension payments, so for example this $100,000, then you can't. You can though take from your pension fund, you can take lump sum withdrawals out of there. So uh, this $100,000, you might take it out in one go and so you think it's a lump sum, but behind the scenes you can actually uh, allocate some money to be a pension and some money to be a lump sum. Lump sums that you allocate towards your pension fund, they reduce down the amount of the transfer balance cap that you've used. So for example, this extra 200,000 that's here, if instead we elected to take that $200,000 as a lump sum out of the pension fund, we could then later roll over an extra $200,000 from the accumulation and top up the pension. There's some reasons why and why you wouldn't do that. In this particular client example, the best way is going to be take a $100,000 minimum pension payment and $200,000 from the accumulation side because we want to run that down. Where you've got money sitting in accumulation, it's generally better to take it from there because these earnings are taxed. But if you had only had this one pension fund and maybe you're expecting an inheritance or something like that, you didn't have all of this extra money in accumulation, you might want to take your pension payments and then anything over and above the minimum pension payments allocate as lump sums because if you get some inheritance later on, you do a downsizer later on, if you end up getting extra money into your superannuation fund later on, then you can roll over some of that to it from accumulation into account-based pension and top back up uh, to your unused cap. So a bit of a deeper dive, pretty complicated stuff going on there. If you have any questions or if you need me to explain anything in a little bit more detail, let me know, happy to do so. All the best, bye.